$5,000. That does not bother God. He's rich in houses and lands. You don't have because you don't ask. Where two or three is touching anything, I'll do it. Now, what happens? I want me a beautiful home in Tinnick, New Jersey, or wherever the place is, Bering Springs. And then the husband and wife get into enormous debate on how much money they got and what they can afford. Hmm? And the husband feels duty bound to go out and work day and night, night and day, because, baby, I promise to take care of you. <laughs> Stop playing God. You're not God. Only God's got that kind of power. Men, learn a lesson. Baby, that's a beautiful home. I can see you in it now as you traipse around on the carpet floors, as you were in your boudoir, in there with the jacuzzi with me. Baby, when you come home from work, the jacuzzi will be running, and I will meet you at the door, and I will undress you piece by piece to the jacuzzi, and you have no cares in the world. Calgon, take me away. However, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but I know who does. Sweetheart, will you join with me in a prayer of faith to our Heavenly Father for what you want? Write this term down. It's called the prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement. Remember, God is a sucker for agreement. God is a sucker for that. What's loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. You know the Bible text? At Pentecost, what made Pentecost happen? They were what? What? They were in agreement. If you can get an agreement with somebody, you can do anything, right? It's called cooperation. And God says, well, they want this half million dollar house. They don't have the money. But they believe in me. And one thing I am not going to do, I am never going to disappoint those who believe in me. That's God's character. That's God's character. That's God's character. So what do you do? Get the plans. Get the picture. Put it up on the wall. Look at it. Touch it. Pray about it. Say, Lord, we are ready to receive. Furthermore, Father, when we get that house, we will have love supreme. Hmm? That's what we're going to do. So unexpected expectations get me in a lot of trouble. Barry Black said it best this morning. I love Barry Black. He's a spiritual leader for me. I'll tell you about it a little bit later. God never blesses my wife through me. He comes through me. God does the work. I'm just carrying it along. He's putting the blessing on me to carry it to her. And that makes a blessing to everybody. Number three. Question. Immaturity. Do we have a discuss a question over here? Yes. is asking, if I work at Andrews University for $33,000 a year with 17, 18 years of experience with a PhD, my wife makes $40,000 teaching at public school, net income of $70,000 plus my consultant fund, $100,000 a year, how are we going to buy a house with kids and tuition? Dr. Warren, you crazy. Well, here's my response. I don't want to be flippant or arrogant. I don't know what God might do. I don't know. I have no idea. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. I 
don't know what you may have for me. I don't know. But I'm going to ask him if that's what we really want. Now, let me ask you a question. Does God work miracles? Does God work miracles? So, where do I get off telling God what he can't do? The reason you don't have is because you don't. Now, that sounds arrogant, but I believe that. As a matter of fact, some of the most marvelous things in my life thus far have been done out of God's miraculous grace. Amen. Anybody got an advanced degree besides me, a PhD, EDD, the kind of degree in here? Let me tell you how that works. You don't ever earn those degrees. You don't earn those degrees. God works on the hearts of your committees to give it to you. You think I'm lying, don't you? I'm not. Right, Brenda Pearsall? We've been to school at Ohio State together. Let me tell you what God did for me. Just, just an aside, right? I'm in my last quarter qualification. Coming down the dissertation all done, and there's what's called a dissertation secretary. Her job is to find everything wrong with your paper. I'm coming in on the last day or the last month or the last hour with a dissertation 400 pages long on William Braithwaite, right? This woman takes the paper normally, she opens it up, and she goes through it, and she measures it and says, well, no, nah, not quite right, and you don't graduate. My turn. All right, Brenda. I walk in. She says, Joseph, all the pages numbered? Yeah. Hmm. Any typos? No. That looks good to me. She never even opened it. The reason you don't have it's because you don't ask. <laughs> We're discussing immaturity. Do we have to discuss the immaturity? Let's move on. He has some notion that his wife is a girl and he's a boy and no, he's not grown up yet. Let's move on. Now, deep unmet spiritual needs. I want you to get this. <clears throat> Deep, unmet emotional needs. It's the best we can do with this thing. Focus a little better, I don't know. I don't think it's the best we can do. Maybe a little larger. Uh, excuse me. Ooh. Good Indian food. <laughs> your holy father knitted you in your mother's womb. Bible text for that. Fearfully and wonderfully made. I knew you in your mother's womb. You know it's Bible text. Now, for those of you who have low self-esteem, let me give you a biological fact that will raise your self-esteem by 20 notches right now. You have been in the mind of God for a mighty, mighty long time. When your mother was born, she was born with all the eggs she'll ever have. When your mother was born, she was born with all the eggs she'd ever have. Your father's a little bit different. He makes about three million every day. But your mother. So in your grandmother's womb, when your mother was being formed, God was busily designing half for you right then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then your mother and father came together in spirit-filled sexual love. And the Holy Spirit hovered over the bed. And sperm number hmm, 1,295,061 was selected to go with that egg he had appointed in your grandmother's womb. And that made you. And here you are. Is that beautiful or what? I am wonderfully and fearfully made. And he made me just the way he wanted me to be. I got size 15 feet. Praise ye the Lord. 
My girlfriend said, right, Brenda? The bigger they are, the faster they can get to me. <laughs> your race, your sex, your color, your creed. God made you so he could find you when he's looking for you. Now, get this. When he was busy making you, he left some parts of you unfulfilled. Hmm. This morning they were called the holes. Remember that term? The holes in us. Some of them were left on purpose. On purpose. Remember the man born blind? Why was he born blind? Come on, y'all. Why was he born blind? So he could glorify God. Don't you realize that some of your deepest unmet emotional needs are the holes in your life that are reserved for the Holy Spirit and nobody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I get excited about that. No person in the natural realm can fulfill those needs. As a matter of fact, somebody wants to suggest you're not really ready to get married until the Holy Spirit fills all your unmet needs and make you completely and totally a filled person. Question. I can't hear you too well. Go ahead. Ten eggs. Go ahead. What? Not having babies a sin? Is is that the question? The question is, is not having a baby a sin? Ten. His question is, if a woman has 10 eggs, two eggs are made into children, and she says, I want no more children, she ties the tubes. Hmm? Is that a sin? Let me answer to you very directly with no disrespect. We know in part. I don't know. Let me tell you what's going to be stone show enough for sin, though. For her to bring a child into the natural realm that is not expected to be loved, cared for, and nurtured in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Now, okay, I don't want to lose discussion on this point. Just, just a minute. I've tried to entertain your question. I'm not going to be able to sell it here. I want to move on, please. Okay, let's go. Now, these unemotional needs work like this. Remember, folks, we don't know the mind of God, okay? So I'll have to let that go. In the natural realm, hold on just a minute. Here we go. Are you with me? Okay. Are you with me? Let's go on. One's deepest unmet spiritual needs cannot be filled by any relationship, situation, event, or concrete object in the natural realm. Marriage is fundamentally 
a spiritual relationship. Okay? Ask me one question. What did Elvis Presley have when he died? No. He had fame, had a bunch of weight. <laughs> he had popularity, money. Why did, why did he kill himself? Through drugs. Why did Elvis Presley commit drug suicide? Because he was an empty, empty man. So, one's deepest unmet spiritual needs, now, cannot be in relationship in the situation, event, in the natural realm. That's my point. Men end up getting divorced because they are spiritually empty. Your wife cannot meet all your needs. That's the Holy Spirit's power to meet some of them. Matter of fact, quite a bit of them. What I do like about it, though, he will authorize your wife to meet them some of the time. That's fun. Moving on. You got it? Some folks call that midlife crisis, by the way. Some folks call it that. I believe firmly until you, all your spiritual needs are met, don't marry anybody. Stay single. Work on them. That's my, okay. You know, marriage is interesting, you know that? Sometimes, sometimes. My suggestion is that don't get married until all your spiritual needs are fulfilled, spiritual needs. Now, ask me a question. Here I am, 26 years old, finished college, right? I'm a Christian. My body is clean. I give you my hand, my heart to God, and keep my body to myself. All right. I got my own apartment. I got my own car. If I want to wash dishes, I do. If I don't, I don't. If I want to make the bed, I do. If I don't. If I want to go to Jamaica tomorrow, I do. Oh, I don't. My life is absolutely, totally mine under God. I'm free. I'm independent. Hmm? Now, why would you give up that kind of absolute freedom for somebody to tell you, I don't like the way you make those sheets. I don't like that food. Why would you leave that stuff in the sink? You know what it is? It's an absolute mystery. <laughs> it's an absolute mystery. What do we tell all our children about getting married? Don't be in a hurry. Enjoy yourself a while. Be 26 and free and good looking. Serving the Lord. Have a wonderful time. Hmm, interesting. So these unmet needs will have to be met only by the Holy Spirit. Here we go. In the natural realm, dropping stuff on the ground here. In the natural realm, Conflict is the absence of peace caused by the absence of agreement and or acceptance. Why men get divorced? Ladies, what is your husband's deepest need of you? It is not sex. We know that. What is it? Acceptance and agreement. Can I be right some of the time? The book is entitled, His Needs, Her Needs. The book is entitled, Men Up From Mars, Women Up From Venus, John Gray. A man needs affirmation. He's always in competition with the weather, the world, and fantasies. Hmm? So, in the natural realm, conflict is the absence of peace caused by the absence of agreement and acceptance. Got that? Okay. Back to our original transparency. Time is getting away from me here. How about that one? That's why men get divorced. 
The spouse grows how? <laughs> what makes a man unnerved when his wife goes back to school? When she gets her own business? Or she decides she is not ever going to cook again in a dirty kitchen? What happens? What happens to the man's concept? How's the man feeling? She control. He's no longer in control. She doesn't need me. Hmm? Yeah. Your spouse grows individually. What is the biggest problem with women living with unsaved husbands? They are taking orders from a higher source which they are not going to bag up on. God says, keep the Sabbath. I am not going to be here on Friday night having your party. That threatens a man like crazy. Hmm? Tasma, control. Lack of agreement. Let's not debate this point. Lack of agreement. Dr. Black talked about learning how to communicate, being in agreement. I'll confess it on tape. I want to be in agreement with Cynthia. I want it more than anything in all the world. Because God's power is released in agreement. I've learned about the prayer of agreement. Learn about this. We pray for folks in agreement about their lives, and God will definitely keep his word and do it. Number seven, sexual fantasy. Do we have to discuss that? What is, <laughs> what is every man's fantasy about sex? Every man's fantasy is very simple. His wife will not have sex with anybody but him, and he is able to have sex with everybody else except his wife. A man's fantasy is, remember the hunters and gatherers concept? He looks over the plain, all the gazelles and the deer and the antelope, and he says, I can get any one of them. That's a man's fantasy. My wife is faithful while I'm going to be a man. Do what a man does. Hmm? Fantasies, all kind of fantasies. Visual fantasies, all right? Fantasies. Women give sex for what reason? Why do women give sex? To get love. Why do men give love? You got that? Same activity, different agendas. Okay, sexual fantasy. Now, I belong to Promise Keepers, marvelous organization. We are taught how to control your thought life. Men, watch the televisions. Watch the Ebony Magazine sometime, hold on. Other day my house came Victoria's Secret Catalog, Brenda. I did not open it. <laughs> I know better. Victoria's Secret Catalog I don't open that book anymore. I pass it on and throw it in the trash and keep on getting up because I'm going to protect my fantasy thought life. You got me on that? A man must bring his thought life under subjection lest he get messed up by Satan. Sexual fantasies. That any kind of sex, every kind of sex, which way sex, whatever, on and on and on. And that's not what God did at all. Now, I want you to do something for me. I want you to understand in the next few minutes, they won't take a break, okay? Take a piece of paper and draw a line like that, straight line, on one side of your paper. I want to give you a visual representation of what marriage is and how God works it. So you know what's happening when you decide to get divorced. When you decide to get divorced. 
Over here, put a little V like that at the top, a little funnel, a little funnel. On the opposite side, do the same thing. Draw a line and put a little V like that. I don't have a pen to use this thing, and just, it just didn't, just didn't work out. OK, you see that? Now, can you see it? I'm sorry. Two straight lines. You got some pens? The right kind for this machine? For your paper. Oh, for the paper. Thanks. Thank you. See the two straight lines? Top, put a V. OK, got that? Mark one male and one female. Put on your side of your paper, Romans 5-5, five, 5-8, five, five, eight, five, 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 eight. One of those texts from Sabbath School lesson. Now, you have never, ever loved your spouse. As you sit here now, you don't love your spouse. I was shocked. I asked some women, when did you begin to love the child that came through your birth canal? One woman said, on the third week. Another woman said, two months. Another woman said, after a year and a half. Are you aware that you don't automatically love a child because it passes through your body? Somebody confess to that? OK. That means love is not automatic. Love is a gift from God. So on your first V, put G-O-D, God. Second V, put V-O-D, God. Romans 5, 8, which is delivered by the Holy Spirit. You have never loved your spouse. You never will love them. The most you can do is let the Holy Spirit use your body as he loves your spouse. And you get the rewards. Ha, ha, ha. I love this. Now, it is my contention that sexual love is God's ideal, his metaphor for the Trinity. So across the bottom of your page, draw a line halfway on both sides. I want to thank Jolene Prosper for half of this model which I developed from her thought. The vertical line represents the love of God flowing from the Father into you. For God is love. You were not born in love. You were born in sin, shaping in Same thing for the Christian. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But I'm getting them your natural birth. Yeah. I'm, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Even Christians have no love to give unless they get it from the Father. I'm, stay with me. Okay. Now. God's love is never perfected in the vertical. I love God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever you want to do. Don't get carried away by that. My pastor taught us very clearly that the love that is vertical to be real must become horizontal. You got to love somebody with the love that God gives you. You got that? Okay, that's why Christ came to...